welcome to learn it now we'll be starting our chapter 2 of physical education the name of the chapter is sports and nutrition so the first topic in this chapter is about balanced diet and nutrition as the chapter name suggests about the sports and nutrition we'll be talking about the balanced diet first so let us discuss what is the basic definition of diet there are basic many definitions given there a diet which contains proper amount of each nutrients like in proper manner it contains appropriate amount of carbohydrates fats proteins etc then it will be called as a balanced diet one more definition is there which tool tell us a diet which consists of all the essential food constituents that is proteins carbohydrates fats vitamins minerals and water in a correct proportion is called a balanced diet a balanced diet contains a sufficient amount of fibers and the various nutrients such as carbohydrates fats proteins vitamins and minerals to ensure good health food should also provide the appropriate amount of energy and the adequate amount of water so that the body can work well now what is the basic definition of balanced diet is that a complete food a balanced diet means a complete food a diet which contains all the adequate amount of necessary nutrients required for the growth and the maintenance of the body in a proper way now let us move on to the next topic which is the nutrition now what is nutrition it is the dynamic process in which the body is made healthy by the consumption of certain amount of food now nutrition has one more definition it is just the process of obtaining or consuming means eating of food or breaking down of food substances taken in by the mouth and to use this kind of substance to provide energy in the body now nutrition has some components the first is known as nutrients now what is the nutrient definition is it is the energetic food in our diet which consists of many different kinds of essential chemicals for our body's growth for example proteins fats carbohydrates vitamins and minerals which give us nutrition with the help of nutrients now what is the main goal of the nutrition or why we are taking these kind of nutrients in our body first is to stay hydrated means our body requires water and for that we have to get hydrated to do our life processes or simple terms of works in our day to day life second is to provide immediate fuel whenever the fuel is required whenever the energy is required we have to get that at that time that's why this is the goal of nutrition third is to improve your performance or to boost your performance next is to preserve muscles and to improve recovery rate also preserve muscles means to make muscles healthy to make muscles powerful and to improve recovery whenever we are doing some work our muscles get loss due to the exercises so the improper recovery or to improve the recovery we have to take the appropriate amount of nutrients in the form of nutrition this is the basic goals of nutrition now we have already learned about what is balanced diet and what is nutrition a special type of nutrition in which a sports person take the different kinds of nutrition to enhance its athletic performances or to enhance its performance in the game it is called sports nutrition so now i'll tell you about the definition it is the study and practices of nutrition and diet as it relates to athletic performances whenever some athlete is performing they need to require some appropriate amount or a special kind of nutrition that kind of nutrition is not comes under the study that comes under sports nutrition the second is it is concerned with all the types and quantity of fluids and food taken by an athletes it deals with its nutrients such as what kind of vitamins minerals and organic substance such as carbohydrate proteins and fats a athlete is taking so that it can enhance its performance in the competitions now let us divide what is nutrition nutrition has been divided into two types the first is known as macronutrients and the second one is known as micronutrients now what is macro it means it includes all the bigger molecules which is includes carbohydrates proteins and fats and also some kinds of water which are required in larger amount and their main function is to release energy inside the body 
for example carbon oxygen hydrogen and nitrogen these are included in macronutrients that's why it is known as macro means in large quantities now what is the micro means it is just opposite of the macronutrients it generally comprises of small quantities which means vitamins and minerals which are required in very trace amounts and for example such as chlorine iron manganese zinc boron sodium copper molybdenum and nickel these are some of the micronutrients which are now we will move to the next component of diet now component of diet has been divided into two components one is nutritive which gives us nutrition and second one is non-nutritive which means it will not give nutrition but will help in some way or other in nutritive it has been divided into macro and micro which we have just learned and in macro it is divided into three carbohydrates fats and proteins in micro it is divided into vitamins and minerals and in non-nutritive components it is divided into five parts the first is the fiber or roughage second one is the water third is the colored compound fourth is the flavored compound and last one is the plant compound so these are the two components of diet divided into nutritive and non-nutritive components now we'll study about what is the first major component of macronutrients is carbohydrates now what is the importance of carbohydrate what are the different products of carbohydrates and what is the importance of carbohydrates we will be learning in this topic now carbohydrates are needed basically to provide energy during exercise whatever we do the energy is provided with the help of carbohydrates only so in our body carbohydrates have only one purpose that is to give energy or to provide energy for the exercises the second is it is mostly stored in muscles and in livers means carbohydrates glucose etc are always stored in muscles and in livers only next is these kind of com complex carbohydrates are found in foods such as pasta bagels whole wheat grains bread rice etc we can find carbohydrates easily and chapati also next is they only provide energy with fibers some amount of vitamins and minerals they are basically very low in fat they are made up of simple sugars such as soft drinks if we are drinking it will provide us direct carbohydrates jams and jelly all the sweet product will give us only carbohydrates such as candies also which provide us with a lot of calories but they do not provide vitamins and minerals and other nutritive substance so this is basically the topic about the carbohydrate now the second topic is the protein now the protein is important for only and only muscle growth and to repair the body tissues which has been damaged due to the exercises so the protein work is to grow the muscle and to repair the muscles that is the only purpose of the protein now protein can also be used by the body for energy but only after carbohydrate stores has been used up if your carbohydrates stores has been over then only the protein can be used to get energy but the energy provided will be very less as compared to the carbohydrates now the next point is only strength training and exercises will change muscles which means eating protein and protein will not make muscles it's only the different kinds of strength exercises and strength training will only change your muscles and unless you are doing exercises the protein will only work after you have done some of the exercises next is athletes even bodybuilders need only a little bit of extra protein to support their muscle growth they need not to have a huge amount of protein shakes etc to build build their bodies next is athletes can easily meet this increased need by eating more total calories or eating more food they can increase the amount of protein in their body in next topic we'll be talking about the fat it is the highest concentration of energy of all the nutrients which means if we mix carbohydrates also and proteins also the fat single-handedly when will all the concentration of energy which means it can gives us the maximum amount of energy the next if one gram of fat is equal to nine calories so that a one pound 
of fat will gives us approximately 3600 calories of energy which is a huge amount as compared to carbohydrates and proteins now fat has been divided into two kinds one is known as saturated fats and the second one is known as unsaturated fats now what is in saturated it is found primarily in animal source like when we eat meat eggs yogurt cheese butter or milk they are high in saturated fat and they are basically solid at room temperature and when we are talking about unsaturated fat they are made up of mono unsaturated and polyunsaturated fat which are found in plant source and they are usually liquid at room temperature like the oils which we are using at our home for cooking they are basically unsaturated fat and what the ghee we are using they are saturated fat now we have completed our macronutrients now we'll be moving on to our micronutrients the first topic is the vitamins it is required in very less amount so a well planned and nutritionally adequate diet should meet these kind of vitamin requirements for an athletes and mineral needs also the supplement will only be of any benefit if your diet is inadequate if you don't get appropriate amount of things then only supplement of certain kinds or certain vitamin will work as you diagnose deficiency such as if you don't have any iron or calcium in your body then only you can take the supplements next use of vitamins and mineral supplements is very dangerous and they should not be taken without the advice advice of any of the qualified health professional whenever the qualified health professional tells you about to take certain kinds of vitamin then only you have to take the certain kinds of vitamins in your body but you can easily take carbohydrates fats and proteins in the quantity what you want but a balanced diet is that which have all the things in proper amount that is the basic meaning of balanced diet now let us talk about what is mineral mineral are very essential in our diet about approximately 4% of our body weight is made up of such kind of minerals which we get from different types of plants and animals it is used by the body in various activities such as when we are having nerve impulses when our teeth are have been formed when we have formation of our hormones and to maintain the heart beat these minerals are required now these minerals are also divided into two parts which is macro minerals and the micro minerals which we will be discussing in the next topic when we are talking about macro minerals it is divided into five topics the first is the calcium which is a mineral potassium sodium magnesium and phosphorus now let us talk about calcium calcium is basically one of the top macro minerals in terms of growth and development of our bones and teeth it helps in the blood clotting also its deficiency can cause a disease called as rickets the sources from which we can get this calcium is cheese milk orange juice eggs green leafy vegetables and cereals the second is the potassium the potassium is one of the most required mineral in our diet it is helpful in keeping our nervous system and the muscular system good and active all the time it also helps in maintaining the water in the blood and the tissues its main sources from where we can get these potassium is banana tomato green leafy vegetables and bean etc the third point is the sodium it basically helps in the muscular activity it also helps in the transmission of nerve impulses from one part of your body to the other the basic sources from which we can get this is salt pickle and butter the next topic is magnesium it repairs our body and maintain the body cells it is found in meat brown rices beans and whole grains etc the last is phosphorus it is most important in the formation of bones and teeth it keeps our muscles and nerves activate or work normally its basic source are egg fish liver milk and unpolished rice etc the next topic is the micro minerals we have already told about or we have already learned about the macro minerals the micro mineral composed of three things one is iodine second is iron and third is chromium now what does the iodine do is it produces hormones for thyroid its 
significant for proper growth and development because thyroid gland helps in the growth and development of an organism basically in humans if we are lacking iodine in our body it will cause a disease called as goiter in which we will have our swollen thyroid gland and will have mental retarded person these sources are basically from salt fish and when we eat seafoods second is the iron now what does the iron do is it is basically essential for the production of hemoglobin and hemoglobin is present in blood what does the hemoglobin do it binds with the oxygen and it supplied oxygen from one part to other or from lungs to different parts of the body so that the cell can work if its deficiency is there it will cause anemia the things from which we can get iron is meat egg dry fruits spinach green leafy vegetables etc the last topic is chromium chromium is very important in the production of hemoglobin the same thing as what iron does the same thing has been done by chromium also its deficiency causes diabetes the sources from which we can get this is soya beans black grams carrot tomato groundnut bajra and barley etc the last topic of this video is fiber or roughage now what is the importance or what is the value is it has non nutritive value which means it does not compose of any nutrition or it does not contribute any nutrition to the body why is it important is it is basically the undigested part of the food and it can easily be said that it cannot be digested by human intestinal tract fiber and roughage cannot be digested by human digestional tract it mainly consists of water and improves intestinal functioning by adding bulk of food it also helps an individual to satisfy the appetite or the requirement of food need in the body it also prevents the constipation problems in many humans and animals that's it for today's video i hope you have understood the topics very well but for more understanding i, I urge all of you to repeat this video again for clearer understanding if you like the video and its content give it a thumbs up and don't forget to comment your name in the comment section if you are unable to understand or is struggling in any of the topic please write the topic in the comment section i'll sure surely try to get to you soon so for more of such videos stay tuned to the channel stay safe stay healthy and don't forget to learn it